I excited. I'm so excited. Okay, actually, Sheila was right. She did predict everything and everything's now on trends. So today, we're going to be talking about 2021 skincare trends that is going to be on the rise. I've got you covered. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Sheila Milmud, your personal skincare coach, teaching you effective ways of achieving your dream skin through education and well-being. So if it's your first time here, well, welcome, and where have you been? So please do not forget to subscribe if you would like to always stay on top of the, your skincare game, if you want to be educated in skincare formulations and skincare science and skin education, the wellness, anything to do with skincare, every single week, come in and join me for a little chit chat. <laughs> okay, you know what? wow, today, I'm actually very excited in doing this video because I love kind of predicting the future because, well, I'm always, I kind of always live in the past. But let's be honest with you, I think like 2020 has been like an absolute joke. <laughs> let's not get into that. But anyway, so I'm so looking forward to 2021. Uh, emotionally also like being able to see my parents and then, I don't know, just like I am really looking forward to 2021. So I was thinking, while well, I'm very excited, why do I not predict the future of skincare for you if it's 2021 and give you a little bit of advice on what kind of products you're going to be probably seeing out there in the future. So number one is azelaic acid. Azelaic acid has actually been, I'll say like an up and coming acid for the past like one, one and a half years. It's always been there in front of us, but we've never actually explored the benefits of azelaic acid. I think like definitely 2019, 2020 has definitely been the year for niacinamide, sodium hyaluronate, which is like all about the hydration, vitamin C and retinol. I think azelaic acid is definitely going to be on the rise. So why I personally think it will be is because everyone, um, is having, well, I'll say that acne is definitely more on the rise this year. So if you've talked to anyone, any of your friends, your families, I have so many clients that who come to me with acne pigmentation, acne scarring, you know, active acne that they've probably never knew it existed. They're like, oh my God, you know, like I've never had acne before, but for the past five to six months, I've been getting so much acne. What do I need to do? For that reason, I can tell you that azelaic acid is going to be a lifesaver for many. Why? Because also sensitive skin is on the rise as well. Skin at the moment is getting much more sensitized and more sensitive. Uh, that's due to the environmental effects. That's not, that's basically not protecting our skin much and also damaging our skin barrier really badly. So essentially we lost kind of our resistance and our strength of our skin. So therefore 2021 especially is going to be a year for creating formulations for sensitive skin. And I think it's going to be very popular. So azelaic acid is essentially a milder form of benzoyl peroxide. So benzoyl peroxide is a very good anti-acne ingredient. But most of the people, benzoyl peroxide, they're a bit afraid of using it. Whereas azelaic acid is great for sensitive skin. So it does exactly the same, I'll say even more than benzoyl peroxide. So the benefits of azelaic acid is, is obviously it reduces hyperpigmentation. It's an anti-inflammatory, so it essentially reduces any kind of acne like the, that red acne scar that is you are left on your face uh, it reduces inflammations because it's an anti-inflammatory as I said and it does help with clearing the acne but it does this all very gently it doesn't have that reactive state of benzoyl peroxide so azelaic acid is definitely going to be on the rise for this year because it's acne treating, but at the same time, it treats hyperpigmentation and anti-inflammatory pigmentation caused by acne at the same time, which is great. That's what we're always looking for. Uh, as I said, there are already some brands that who have started the trend of azelaic acid and Susan Yara's new brand, for example, Naturi Nat Naturium, I think it is. I'm so sorry if it's a wrong pronunciation, but she's included azelaic acid into her formulation. So this is always a sign when when new brands, like new brands start to include new ingredients into a formulation, take it as a sign that it is going to go far and they are going to be talking about it more in the future. So number one, azelaic acid, we've covered that. If you are acne prone, if you are hyperpigmentation prone, the azelaic acid is going to be your lifesaver for next year. While we're in this acid format, I'm going to be talking about PHA. Now, again, as I said, because sensitive skin is going to be so common next year, 
uh, don't forget we've been wearing masks a lot so we're kind of irritating our skin we've been getting lots of redness we've actually we have we've destroyed our own skin barrier by using um, masks religiously obviously as we should we are actually kind of um, becoming a bit prone towards sensitivity um, so therefore PHA which is a polyhydroxy acid is going to be very popular in exfoliating toners next year um, the thing with AHA and BHA, you have to be a bit careful because they do interfere with a lot of formulations. So for example, you'll never be able to use AHA, BHA in the same routine with retinol, which many people started to use retinol now as their kind of targeted treatment. So they're almost, you'll always see now, especially now in 2021, uh, my sales, particularly in exfoliating acids has been gone down for people that who want to introduce retinol into their routine. So we're seeing um, a bit of a dilemma here as cosmetic formulators because obviously we want to do sell our retinol or vitamin A derivative products, but then we also want to sell our exfoliating toners. So ideally we want people to use them in the same routine, but they can't because it's too skin irritating. So this is where PHA will come to the rise and that's going to be polyhydroxy acid. That is essentially the best form of acid like chemical exfoliant for your skin. So already uh, there's one brand that does this really well. I'm not talking about any PHA, BHA combination here. I'm talking about pure PHA exfoliating toner. So that is for example, Medicaid. They have a really good press and glow PHA toner and it, it is fragrance free it's got no alcohol uh, no essential oils and it's good for sensitive skin and also in the description they say that you can use this with our retinol products so obviously it is going to be a very popular product for next year and you will be probably seeing lots of different brands because at the moment there are very limited but you will be probably seeing lots of brands maybe even me uh, including PHA alone in their formulations as an exfoliators this is, this is gonna be a game changer. Game changer. Like I remember, I always remember my mom like slathering me with like SPF when I was really young. So the sun damage, the effects of sun damage at the moment is like talked a lot. We see dermatologists, skincare professionals, influencers talking about SPF, SPF, SPF. So obviously SPF was on the rise, right? So since 2018, 2019, especially 2020, I say 20, 2020 it was a little bit of a low because people stayed at home. They didn't use much SPF. Um, even though like, for example, now I'm, I'm right in front of a mirror here and it's morning so i am putting my spf on because i essentially don't want those harmful rays to come through the window to my skin but people i would say are a little bit reluctant of using spf at home just because of the here it goes concentration and the consistency and people don't like using spfs people are a little bit like yeah about spfs so my friends 2021 it's going to be the year for good spf formulation la, la, la. so you're gonna actually going to be able to get really good okay serum type spfs so already there's a brand that does this really well i think it's called the ilia they call the super serum serum skin tint because people are going out they're going to be wanting a tint as well they're going to start looking at more of like a two-in-one formulas or even three-in-one formulas multi-use formulas so that's going to be also another trend i'm going to be talking about so therefore you're going to be finding lots of sbs's that will contain tints and lots of sbs's that contain serum properties so you'll find um vitamin b3 so niacinamide vitamin b5 pantenol uh, sodium hyaluronate hyaluronic acid uh, actually included in formulations for spfs because people now especially after being educated on skincare so much are going to be more careful of what they put on their skin because people are going to be a little bit more health conscious and therefore they're going to select ingredients the ingredients that we hear a lot which is what is it as i said the trend was niacinamide, sodium hyaluronate, vitamin C, antioxidants. So people are actually going to be searching for these ingredients in their SPFs and they're going to be woof, sell out. Trust me, sell out. Another thing that is going to be on the rise is obviously people are actually being 
more aware, as I said before, of what they put into their skin. I think lots of people now talking about avoid chemical SPFs, go for mineral-based SPFs, which is essentially SPF that contains zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. But my friends, unfortunately, it's, these ingredients are a little bit hard to work on the skin. So they don't glide like the chemical SPFs and they do sometimes leave this like whitey tint almost, which could look a bit gray on darker skin tones. So therefore, iron oxide is going to be an ingredient where it's going to be started to use a lot. It degreases the effect of the white cast that you get from zinc and titanium dioxide. And essentially it also, again, all about multi-use formulas, also helps with hyperpigmentation and improving the look of melasma. So we are going to be seeing some smart technologies of SPF and we are going to be start seeing iron oxide being included in SPFs that are like serum based with a nice tint that is going to be really nice and glided on the skin very easily as well. So that's going to be on the rise. The next one, you are going to see a rise of injectables next year because don't forget, people haven't actually had the opportunity to get like their facials done. So we are going to see clinics that are going to be offering these kind of um, lovely treatments that you can essentially go for a good pick-me-up. But then also we are going to see the high uh, demand of injectables. Like 10 years ago in Turkey and Cyprus, if you ask someone, oh, did you have a Botox done? Like, oh, have you got Botox? Which I have to ask as part of my consultation. They'll be like, oh, um, like, I, I don't want to tell you. Like, no. It was almost something that they never said it out loud. Whereas this year, or like last year, or the, for, the, for the past two, three years, you're like, yeah, I got Botox, so should you get one done? Look at your forehead lines. And I'm like, okay, okay, I, I got the point. Uh, you know, so people are actually much more open talking about it, which is great. You know, people are finally sharing their secrets. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But seriously, but it's, it's nice to able to have that discussion with people without actually feeling, should I ask? So anyway, so what's going to become really popular is Profolio. Pro, prof, profio, profio, profolio, profio, sorry. Uh, so anti-aging treatment essentially. Injectable hyaluronic acid, because hyaluronic acid now, everyone knows about it. So non-surgical Reno Plus is also going to be on the rise. So people are gonna be a bit self-conscious, but they're also going to have less to spend. So I'll say that they won't do it all, they'll do either or, right? So clinics, uh, if you are watching this video, you'll know what I mean. People are gonna be a little bit more careful with how they spend their money and they'll probably will try to go for the most effective treatment uh, rather than go for multiple treatments. And which leads me to the next point of everyone's gonna have a less is more approach. Can we have a clap here please? Finally, finally, finally. Okay, so essentially this Korean skincare whole, um, I'll say, ideology came and busted into the USA market and the European market and everyone started to think that I have to use 10 step routine or I have to use a 15 step routine. So I was just looking at Dove Cameron's like skincare routine and she was like, I'm going to do you a 12 step skincare routine. I'm like, excuse me. We've been spending too much time online watching Hiram. <laughs> No, but seriously, who doesn't love Hiram? And who doesn't love Susan Yara? Who doesn't love Dr. V? So essentially what's going to happen is people are going to be looking for more efficient skincare. So for example, my own skincare range, which you have to book me in advance. Basically what I'll do is I'll put the link uh, below in the description. If you do want to book a consultation session with me, I would love to take care of your skin journey. Uh, it's an online consultation where we essentially analyze your skin type and your skin needs. And I would myself develop you a personalized skincare routine for you day and night based on efficient simplicity and then I would do your personalized formulations according to your skin type and your skin needs. So to wrap it up essentially less is more approach is going to be very popular people are going to minimize their skincare routine essentially we're going to see a rise in efficient skincare so exactly my methodology I love efficient but simple skincare and guess what 2021 is going to be the year for efficient 
simple skincare. And finally, online services for skincare. So anything to do with personalization, anything to do with consultation, coaching, these kind of services, you will definitely see them more on the rise for next year as well, for 2021. Definitely, you'll definitely see much more skincare influencers coming up. When I first started this business, I'll tell you honestly, so Skin Masterclass, officially how I started it was in 2016 it was, where obviously uh, Mario, uh, Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, he was obviously kind of the leading field in this masterclass. At the time I was very, it was very hard for me to find any kind of skincare advice. I was going into sets um, of TV series, so essentially they would be in production and I would go into the sets and I would work alongside with the makeup artist to prepare the skin of the celebrity. I was very lucky and I'm still very blessed and very thankful for the opportunity that I had when I was only 23 years old when I was essentially asked to uh, do consultation services for skincare education. This was back in Turkey. So Turkey uh, does recognize skincare as a very important topic. And I, I, do, I do believe that people in Turkey, people in Cyprus do really like taking care of their skin. Makeup has always been like a part of our go-to products, but skincare has always been, it's like similar to India. India and Malaysia, I feel like people, like France especially as well, people do love taking care of their skins and they do love like the whole education aspect of skin as well. That's how I found it. So when I was going in and I was like, okay, but this is how you have to cleanse your skin and this is how you have to apply your moisturizer and this is how you apply your makeup afterwards, your skincare people were like oh okay so this makes sense and I feel like um, for this year 2021 people using less amounts of makeup have become much more conscious of their skin so therefore there are going to be lots of businesses lots of services going to be provided to this hungry market so people are hungry to learn people are hungry to explore and people are hungry to improve and essentially online services that are able to offer this at a lower price point than a face-to-face -face, essentially will be people's best friends. So people are going to be relying more on consultations online, possibly buying online without the need of traveling, uh, you know, getting education online, you know, being more present online, following more skincare influencers. And oh, by the way, if you're not following me, you have to follow me on Instagram. That's at Skin Masterclass. So do make sure that you do follow me on Instagram. So you can literally see my skincare tips every single day so on youtube it's every week however on instagram it's every day so that's a win-win do let me know what kind of ingredients or what kind of products that you've been loving in 2020 and let's recap the 2020 in a very nice positive form and say bye bye to it uh, so do yeah please let me know what was your favorite product of 2020 what you are expecting from 2021 in terms of skincare and also any best wishes for the future just comment below i'm always active on my comments as i said so i'll definitely message you back and if you have any other further recommendations for videos please do let me know i'll make sure that i'll film a video for you okay guys have a lovely lovely day love you all and have a brilliant 2021